everybody and welcome back to Performance on Wheels. This is 4,000 miles of Ford Bronco Wild Track ownership. One of the top tier Broncos that you can purchase right now, the Rally Bronco. Wow. This thing has been amazing the last 4,000 miles and today we're going to unpack what it's been like. Yeah, here on Performance on Wheels, we like to do a little series where it's the truth of owning a car, and that's what we unpack today on the Wild Track. It's not all good and rosy, but today it's the truth on things that you want to know about if you're in the market or if you are a owner of the Wild Track. And speaking of true, let's go ahead and talk about what we are walking around whoa, whoa, this whoa. Bronco today What's in. up? This is True Classic, which is an American company yeah, that makes some vets. fantastic, fantastic classic, high quality clothing. Today we are both rocking True Classic shorts, shirts, and hats. Now if you guys want 25% off of your next order from True Classic, please be sure to use our code POW, that is P-O-W, 25, I actually pow, I 25. have a little fact, fun fact here. Okay. Ready? So the true classic t-shirt that I'm wearing, I'm actually a fan of it, right? This is like two years old. So okay. this isn't just some huge promo. Like I'm actually a fan of this stuff. It holds up really well uh, and I enjoy it. And this is what it looks like after two years of yeah. working on cars. And, and these are these are some stuff. brand new shorts and a brand new shirt and I'm absolutely loving them. So like I said, use our code POW25, POW25, to get 25% off of your next True Classic order. Let's talk about Broncos. Out of all of the off-road vehicles that are currently on the market that are in somewhat of this segment, we have G-Wagon, we have uh, Wrangler, we have Defender, that are all just specifically right. off-road oriented vehicles. Forerunners. I think this is probably right up with the G-Wagon when it comes to road just presence. road presence yeah. and aggressiveness coming behind you. With the, day, the daytime running lights, the DRLs with that circle with the line through them, the white Bronco lettering on this specific Stands model, out. with that, that oval cut gloss black grill, the metal bumper and bash plate, it just looks mean. It's pretty awesome. I have been seeing some lately though that like, at first I really like the, the contrast on the white Bronco, mm -hmm. but I've been seeing some that either have Bronco removed or have that blended in. And I think that looks really good too. So yeah. I'm actually toying if I want to get rid of the white Bronco up front there. But you're right, like there's the road presence. From every angle, the Bronco looks good. From every angle, this thing looks super menacing. So yep. with that Sasquatch package, um, it's come, come standard here on the Wild Trek. It gets those super wide front and rear fenders yep. with the big old tires on them. And man, it just looks mean, yeah. it really does. And you get and the, uh, the, the, the beadlock capable yeah, wheels there. I was just there gonna say and... the beadlock capable wheels with such a large sidewall and the tires, the stance that it comes with, the overall front rear side presence of this thing, after 4,000 miles, it looks just as good as it did new. Now, surprisingly, um, they're, with the shape of the windshield, you'd think, um, we haven't had any cracks or yet. any, any, my, any my wife or has some yet. historical now or historical history of uh, cracking every windshield she has. So I am uh, waiting for that day to occur. I do think it will happen, but we haven't had one yet. Which is actually quite surprising. So the, the Bronco and the Wrangler both have that really, really steep, aggressive glass. And after 4,000 miles, we have not gone through a windshield, which is kind of crazy to think like 4,000 miles really is not much. But with that steep of glass, it's more common than you'd think. Now, since we're up front, we might as well just open up the hood here and see what is under it. And it is a mess. Sure it, is. It's an absolute mess. There is nothing pretty about this thing. It's not aesthetically pleasing. Not at all. And it looks quite miserable to work on, actually. <laughs> but what it is, is a lot of fun to drive. Drive. It is. It actually makes quite a bit of power, quite a bit of torque. So this is the 27 twin turbo V6. Yep. Um, this is actually the base motor in most F-150s. So um, uh, yeah, so this is an F-150 motor. And it moves a half ton truck And it well. moves a half ton truck pretty, pretty good. And then it's also paired to that 10 speed transmission and it makes this thing quite a bit yeah. of fun to drive. So the only options on the wild track are this motor and that transmission. So if you want the four cylinder for some reason, or if you want a manual, not happening, right? Or if you want the big motor, you gotta get the Raptor. For sure. But so let's uh, talk about some of the true facts about this motor and the experience. So one thing that we can offer is we have a lot of other videos on Broncos because we've experienced a two door big Ben. So 
with that same motor, with the same transmission and two-door, kind of the best package you could get when you're talking an economy standpoint. We're getting around 22 miles per gallon, just under 22 miles per gallon. And I use my wife as the test for miles per gallon because I like the power. So we're not going to get an accurate representation of no. what you can get out of this thing uh, because I like to get into the power a little little more than she does. I like the turbo noises. Yeah, she gets she drives very economically. So this wild track on the 35 inch tires, I will say that I'm impressed, but it's not great. Uh, we're at 17.4 miles per gallon, and that is with my wife driving. I can guarantee you if it was me driving, it would at least be down around 16. And that's a mix between city and highway on a day-to-day -day basis. Yep, so it's, it's definitely better than I thought, but it's not great. Luckily, Ford does have the technology that you can detune or it detunes the motor by using 87 octane. So you can save a little bit at the pump having that turbo motor, but you're also losing out on some Something that's going to not only cost more at the pump, but also cost you more because it's going to be more fun by releasing about 30 more horsepower automatically with higher octane in the 2.7. As we move on to the side of the Bronco here, what our plan is, we're going to start up front, side, back, hop on the inside and wrap the video up just so you guys know. Um, this is carbonized gray, by the way. So I actually have a new Ford Maverick. We have some videos on that if you're interested for uh, whatever reason, but it's actually the exact same color as this Ford Bronco. It's also carbonized gray, but I find it very interesting how terrible it looks compared to the Bronco. Like, <laughs> like the paint quality overall on the Bronco Bronco looks substantially higher. Um, not only that, but it just, I mean, mine, mine looks like a cheap, it's cheap. I mean, it, it looks terrible. Too. Yours is, hasn't been washed in about six months. Oh, think, but so. it's not even that. It, it just looks terrible compared to this. I don't know if it's the Bronco goes through a more high quality paint section uh, or, or what it is. Yeah, let's start with the car wash and go from there. Yeah, okay. All right. So this is a fairly decked out Bronco. It's a wild track, obviously, but not only is it a wild track, it has things like the Lux package and the leather package. And the rare, at the moment, hard top. Right, but it don't, didn't only come with the hard top, we also got the soft top as well. Yes, which, we did. If you're watching this video and you're interested and you want that soft top, I'm still not convinced that we're gonna use it. So if you really want it, why don't you comment down below and maybe we can hook up and sell you a soft top or just shoot us an email that is also going to be in the description below so this msrp on this one is sixty four thousand dollars which that is an expensive vehicle uh i went into it thinking holy crap why would anyone ever pay that dollar amount for a ford bronco you went into that before you went to the bronco school i the did bronco rodeo yes so that that was my opinion prior to going into the bronco off-road rodeo we do have a video highlighting that if you're curious about that and we're also going to go again to a different location so hit the subscribe button so we can go on that journey with you as well but i went there i really understood how much fun these are uh, and the capabilities and then this one showed up and i kind of had to have it so it was twenty thousand dollars more than the previous bronco almost we had. to the dollar yeah almost to the dollar literally um and after driving it i was like this is a different vehicle it is actually almost worth twenty thousand dollars more and, and we're going to start with the reason that it is is behind the wheel so this has the haas 3.0 suspension all around standard now yep this has the sasquatch package um which the other one did not have all our standard and then it also has the raptor steering rack so just the combination of that together causes uh from a very rough rugged ride and the two-door that we had to an almost luxurious ride in this by no means is it a range rover but it, it, it goes over bumps smoothly. It's yeah. pretty comfortable going down the road. Not only that, but in the lower trims, we do have those cloth seats, which I personally don't think are the greatest. I'm usually a big fan of Ford cloth seats, but for whatever reason, in the Broncos, they just weren't the most comfortable seats in the world. And what you're bringing up with the seats is something I'm gonna highlight in a little bit, because we do have some issues or concerns about the Bronco, so it's not all ra roses and rainbows here. Uh, we are gonna talk about some negative things, so make sure you stick around for that stuff. So yeah, exactly like Austin was talking, there is a substantial difference and not only like behind the wheel feel, but there's obviously some nice appointed uh, luxury items that come with the wild track, making sense of that 60 plus thousand dollar price tag when you're comparing it to other vehicles on the market, such as the Defender. We had a Defender that was very close in price to this, 
If you're in the market or cross shopping, stay tuned to Performance on Wheels for a future video on that. But when we start talking about some of the tech, we can talk about simple things just like this next to me, which it's a simple feature, but it adds a lot to a vehicle. It makes it stand out. It's a nice feature to have as a turn signal, not only a turn signal there, but we also have that 360 view. Uh, so cameras, the bird's eye view, uh, which also gives some additional capability when you're off-roading. And it doesn't stop there. There's the fun little uh, perimeter lighting feature. So you can turn on your lights on the side, the front, and the rear. A full 360 degree perimeter if you're out on the trails or if you're trying to get your campsite set up. Or heck, you just lost a french fry and you want to find it. Uh, it gives you that option. Kind of a fun feature. I really dig it. And then on top of that, there's also blind spot assist built into the, these mirrors. So basically what he's saying is don't run this into a tree because I guarantee you this part's well over a grand. But with the Bronco, there's so many accessories that come so easy to, to, to add on, right? So we have the upfits, upfitter switches that are pre-wired throughout different locations of the vehicle. Some even come up front here. But if you were to crash this mirror, yes, it's gonna be expensive, but it will be very easy to change. And that goes throughout the entire Bronco. You could remove the doors, the top, uh, the fenders even, if you wanna get crazy, with some basic hand tools. And this was by design uh, from the engineers looking back to the original Bronco of the 60s, thinking, this was an era when people liked to work on their cars, so we can't make a car and put parts on it that are hard to work on. So with some simple hand tools, you can take a part, a pretty good chunk of this Bronco, and get out on the trails and really enjoy this thing. Just make sure you don't look under the engine bay. Now, usually in most car reviews, we'd open up the trunk, show you how much space there is and everything, but we do have other videos that compare sizes from the four-door and the two-door. We have videos on just everything about size on the Bronco, so check out that video up in the corner right now if you're curious about what it's like when we open this thing up when it comes to size. But ultimately, I, I think we're pretty much ready to just hop in this thing and drive it. We're but I do want to I do want to touch on one thing as well. So... I really like these taillights. So these are the LED taillights on good. the Bronco. But what I don't like is the Raptors. Um, I, I find it very interesting that these are the base taillights and the Raptors, I personally think look like a downgrade. They're like two little box squares with a big plastic housing around them. Had to make it stand up and, for another 30 grand or so. Oh yeah, and then they also had to make it stand out with the one foot of plastic, unpainted, yeah. smooth fender in the back. The I, I do really like the Raptor. I just wish they would have made it look like the price point it's at. The Raptor's almost 90 grand. Like yeah. it's 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 88, 87, 86,000 dollars the ones I've seen come in through our work. Um and I just don't like they look cheap. Yep. They they look cheap in a lot of different areas. Like this is this looks good. It's textured plastic. Um this looks good, the LED outline. Yeah, it, it does it does a really nice job of blending the fact that hey, I'm tough, I'm ready to hit the trails, yeah. but hey, I can also show up to a nice restaurant and present myself well Absolutely. in the vehicle. So that's what's cool about the upper trims in the Bronco the wild track specifically obviously we're talking about and don't lose sight of the fact that we have like the, the the parking sensors not only in the rear but also in the front some of those fun features that become uh standard when you get up into the trim level of the broncos it doesn't end there because we have the comfort features on the inside we'll get there in just a second where we start talking about heated steering wheels and all the safety features that come with the the ford i think they still call it the ford 360 um but uh, that big screen we're going to talk about in a minute but let's talk about a few issues that have been going around so i've been seeing some faults on the interwebs about this glass actually being shattered inward i even uh, saw a video uh, picture of a video surveillance picture of in a parking lot during a wind event where that just buckled right in right so that's kind of a booger. There has been some minimal quality issues that have been reported. Uh, simple things like door glass uh, vibrating a little bit. And we did experience that on the two door. But we've also had some other issues uh, with this model specifically and also just some annoyance observations that I do want to share with you guys. So let's get on the inside because that's where the talking points kind of take place. Presentation wise, this looks absolutely great. I think it's sandstone and black, the leather package that came on our wild track a $2,100 option so this is no joke fun fact in order to get cup holders in the back in your armrest 
or to get an armrest in general, uh, you have to have the leather. And that's apparently what it costs to get cup holders. So one of my complaints that I've been experiencing uh, before we drive this, we're going to get in and drive and share some highlights with you there, is whenever I wear jeans, and maybe it's the brand of jeans I've had, but I've never had this problem with any other jean, that little buckle that's on your butt, you know, the little like rivet, every time I get out of the Bronco, it like catches on a seam and it drives me absolutely bonkers because I feel like I'm going to wear the seat out. Now we've noticed already in these I don't know if we want to call them leatherette seats. It says they are leather trimmed vinyl seats, which that makes sense for me when we're talking about capability of taking the top off and getting it dirty and potentially getting it wet. It wouldn't make sense to have full fledged leather seats. But we've already noticed even under 1000 miles, some very minor little um, transfer of color or little scratches in the color. And obviously we've had a lot of different cars, so it's not like we're doing anything different or this is anything new. It's just something we're noticing. So with time, I really wonder if the color on these leather seats is gonna hold up that color in the vinyl seats. Uh, we also have had a technical issue with the Bronco Wild Track. This one was a real booger because we live in Minnesota and it happened during winter time. This is the first time ever I will add um, being involved in probably 50 plus Ford vehicles, not only at my work, but some personal experiences too, is the uh, Ford Pass app. It wasn't specific to the app. It's an issue with the vehicle. Um, it's not connecting. It's losing connection with the modem or something like that. It works sometimes. It's not working other times. We do still need to get it in. So we uh, stick with us so you get a full report on the resolve. We've done all the resets. We've taken batteries off. We've did factory resets on this and factory resets on that and taken apps off our phone. We've done everything that's within our power and we're still experiencing the issue. So to me, it's an actual issue with the uh, I don't know if the modem is the right word, but the device that is receiving and sending signal uh, through the cellular network. Now, as far as everything else the Bronco has to offer and having the big uh, over 12 inch screen that you get with that Lux package and the features like heated seats and heated steering wheel and dual climate control and all of the fun little goodies that you get uh, as far as lane keeping assist, um, it's pretty solid. It is really solid. Everything works well. Um, and also like simple things like the home link system for your garage door opener. That's one of those luxuries that you lose sight of, which we didn't have on the big bend lower trim model. I know it's like a basic thing, but it really becomes a frustration in a vehicle where it's lacking storage to begin with. A simple item like your garage door opener is kind of a pain in the butt to have. Uh, so that home link is actually a really valuable option. One thing we can't forget to touch base on before we start zipping down the road in this old girl is the sound system. So that bass sound system in the, I don't know, non-wild track, the big bend that we had as an example, it was definitely lackluster. It was tinny sounding. Uh, there was really no quality. Uh, in the wild track, it is solid. It's not the best sound system you're going to have in a vehicle, but it does a good job of producing sound that is enjoyable to listen to. All right, now that we are behind the wheel of the Wild Track, it's important to point out a few things that I think are really, if you haven't driven the Bronco yet, these are really important, important to know because there is a difference. And that first big difference is the road presence difference. And this obviously is not only the Wild Track, but anything that has the Sasquatch package. And you can genuinely feel, and we know this for a fact, because we had that big bend for a while that we put about 5,000 miles on. But when you are behind the wheel with the Sasquatch package, it gives it just enough lift and that you have just enough road presence to make it feel a little more substantial driving down the road. It feels meaner driving down the road. And I still feel that way even after 4,000 miles of driving the wild track. Every time I get in, it has that feeling kind of of a menacing presence driving down the road with those big beefy 35 inch tires. Some other things to point out in the cabin here, and I'll try to make this quick before my next statement, is I have my phone on the wireless charger, which that is a standard feature 
on the wild track. But the issue is, is I've got my empty water here that of course my wife left for me. And I don't have anywhere to put my wife's sunglasses because I have my upfitter switches and nowhere to store my sunglasses. And I can't put them on top of my phone because that's on the charger. And holy tamole, am I thirsty. So now I'm just kind of struggling with where am I going to put my stuff? So there is some pretty fun stuff on the aftermarket that uh, just small little cubbies that make a truly big difference. And I highly recommend the one that we have. I'm also going to look into the ones that are on the door because I think that's going to add value. The only issue with it is, is you start to lose some of your side to side leg room. When you talk side to side, that brings up another point worth talking about. And this is more specific to the wild track because of that Raptor steering rack. Like this thing's fun to drive. You can push it into corners pretty hard with that independent front suspension, as well as that steering rack. You're in this big beefy car, but it actually handles the road quite well. So you would think this is this big bop around rough riding vehicle between the Fox bypass sh so shocks. Remember we're on that Haas 3.0 on model years 23 and a up, going up from now that's a standard feature previously it was not you don't have the Haas 3.0 for sure if you have an earlier wild track so take note of that but this thing's fun to drive and you throw down that yeah right that 2.7 liter v6 she's torquey the turbo kicks in i will say that under heavy acceleration and this is the rear end this is the big tires this obviously is not a performance car but when the shifts come it takes a good second or two for that turbo and the engine to spool back up so it's kind of a delayed shift between um under heavy seller acceleration there's is a delay in those shift points now in summary if you have you know mid sixty thousand dollars a lot of money it is a lot of money is this the vehicle that you would pick again Ooh, 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 ooh. What I would almost have to say there is stay tuned because very soon we are going to compare this uh, to a vehicle I didn't think it could compare to prior to owning it, and that is the Defender. Um, so yeah, at this price point, you're talking about starting price of some of the other like luxury SUVs yep. or some of the other top tier ones. Or even a little bit older used G-Wagon. Yeah, yeah, but, but what's gonna be interesting is when the 4Runner gets its refresh so it's not 20 years old anymore, as well as the Lexus GX460 when that gets its refresh. So yeah. that'll make things interesting when you're talking about an off-road capable SUV that is in that $60,000 price point, which is a lot of money. Money. Uh, but the Bronco is, in my opinion, in today's market, it's a lot of money, but it is worth it. Between the functions, the tech, the capability it has. For, I mean, for crying out loud, this thing was tested on the Baja 1000 or whatever. The yeah. engineers hopped in this thing off of the factory line for a couple years in a row and got out on the what? desert and just let her buck. You know so. what? Here's, here's what's slightly mind-boggling to me is... You know, for mid $60,000, the Bronco's a really, really great car. For sure. People are still paying that for Wranglers. Yeah. They've been, to the, they haven't had a, what was it, 15, 16? They had their last design change for the JL. Right. Blows right. my mind. This thing is way better than a Wrangler in every way, in my opinion. I think we're very close. Uh, here we are in May, the middle of May of 2023, and there are still some rumors out there that trim packages such as the Wild Track, because they're harder to get with the, the hard top and all the goodies, um, there's still a few dealerships I'm seeing that are trying to mark these up still, but we're very close to that not existing anymore. Yep. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video on the Bronco. Don't forget to get your true classic t-shirt and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out the full array of Bronco videos that we have on our channel. See you guys next time.